Okay, now we're going to take a look at the envelope follower outputs for the programmable spectral processor, model 296M. Um, so for this, I have the, uh, or I guess, back up. Um, on the 296E, what's so cool about that is it's, um, it's individual kind of readouts for... Um, for every band that's going on. You can actually, you know, see what is happening within that bandwidth as far as your uh, input signal. Um, and so, um, and that's really helpful with the um, envelope follower outputs for there because you can kind of see a visual representation of what possibly an envelope could be doing, what kind of CV output you could get from that specific band. Um, but with this, we don't really have that visual feedback. So I've employed the... Uh, the multiple arbitrary function generator, uh, model 248. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, send the envelope followers um, into its external input and set that to um, its kind of like internal strobe. And then we'll be able to see, um, g you know, whatever given uh, envelope follower output that we have plugged in, we're going to be able to see the the voltage kind of light up through the 16 steps of, um, of, yeah, of the, uh, the MARF. So what I've got going here is, uh, back to that saw wave and I'm going to start plugging in on the zero input. And right there, it's like, we barely saw any jump. Um, it just, the voltage moved from one to two. <laughs> Um, and I'm just going to kind of keep plugging through. So now I went to um, the envelope follower. I guess it's labeled zero, the odd output. Um, and that's uh, reading just kind of a steady nine uh, voltage on here, um, which would be my guesstimation if we're kind of splitting it up for 10 volts. It's probably, you know, a little bit over five into the six volt range. And so just kind of keep poking in on down the line and yeah just given what frequencies are in this um, sawtooth wave that we have going um, it's kind of pitched lower we're getting higher readouts on some of the lower uh, frequencies and some of the mids but when we get up to the highs there's barely any if we turn up frequency now I have it on a band that's um, like the 2.6 thousand band and that's set to 10 right now so kind of just plug it around in there and there's basically no CV coming out of the lower ones so with a you know a static uh, oscillator going into this, there's not going to be much fluctuation. It's just going to be static because if you are not moving the pitch, uh, it's not going to, you know, go anywhere. So I'm going to plug in um, a sequencer, or I'm going to uh, plug in the other side of the MARF that's going into now the uh, Saab tooth oscillator on the um, uh, 259. And um, if you're watching the video, you'll see in the readout now out of this uh, seventh output, which is the uh, 1000 uh, uh, hertz band, uh, it's jumping all over the place with the pitch of this. So I'm going to turn up the sequence now. So now we have a lot of movement. Um, and then another thing to, that we haven't, I haven't mentioned is there are three settings for the envelope decay time. Uh, we have it set in the short mode right now. Uh, there's a combo mode in the middle, which I flip that down. And there's not, it still is kind of jumping um, all throughout these kind of um, 16 LEDs that I have set up here on the MARF. Um, but there's a bit of a difference, like it's maybe not as erratic. And then I set it to the long section and um, you can actually kind of see more of a decay through the changes of this. Um, it's um, instead of just being very lightning quick with its jumps, there's a little bit of glide to this. So 
we're just hearing that's all we've heard is just the oscillator so if i plug this actually into something that we can hear um, i'm going to plug in the um the complex oscillator principal oscillator on the 259 and i've got it going into the timbre input right now so now we're hearing this is in the long mode out of the seventh output if i switch it to um short so now we can hear that in short and it's it's not it didn't have that actual kind of decay it's just basically falling along with like the high um, pitches that are going into the oscillator it's jumping up to those areas here's combo it's like maybe a little bit of decay on that and then we're gonna go back to long so yeah now uh, what I haven't shown is like let's go to a different band right so we've, this has just been on the seventh band if I go up to like say the 2000 it's a little bit different it's still in long mode I'll go to short that's yeah different than what we had at seven I'll go back to seven now I'm gonna go into B I'll keep it on short and let's go and go from the bottom actually so let's start at zero so now this is just fluctuating um, kind of from zero up to five in this short mode and there's only you know maybe about two to four volts that is maybe coming out at this area so it, you know we can hear that the timbre is not getting swept up as high as it was uh, when it's you know going all the way up reaching 10 volts at some point so yeah, it's very different. Now we're up to uh, uh, the second output. Um, and sorry, I guess to <laughs> that's because we know it starts, the output start at zero. So that was actually the, the first output. Now we're on output two. Now we're on output three. Here's four. There's five. Uh, six is barely going at all. It's just kind of hovering around between the first four um, sections of the MARF. Uh, back to seven that we've seen before. I think we've done eight. Here's nine. That's a bit lower. Now we're on to A. Here's B. There's C. Here's D. And that's a cool kind of funky change. Here's E. And the last one, F. So yeah, kind of, kind of neat. And then obviously we could go through. I can think to save on a bit of time. Um, could go through and you can kind of play with the combo output or the long output. So, you know, from this one input, there's different. I mean, it is based on where that frequency is going, but you're getting um, kind of. Um, you know, different outcomes from each of the outputs, which is kind of neat to pull from. Obviously, like I said, it's, it's more of kind of, I find whenever I use that, um, I'm just like, I just did, I'll kind of just go down the row of, um, outputs and try different, different ones to see, you know, what they're actually putting out and if it fits what I'm looking to do. Um, another cool thing is to run those into, uh, CV processors. So I believe the, 255 was kind of developed with the 296 in mind you're taking you know a bunch of these um envelope followers out and then you could invert those and add um positive and negative slew to those to kind of bend those um these you know cv fluctuations even further um 
so what uh another cool thing i want to kind of show is actually um uh, self-patching this thing so to and a just to get some interesting sounds i you know show you what you can do when you self-patch it um and start you know creating a feedback loop but also um you can kind of get some interesting um cv from that too from the envelope followers out so um bear with me as uh this takes a bit of finesse and kind of finding the right points i mean you're dealing with no, <laughs> nothing's exact when you're when you're dealing with feedback um but in general i'll so i'll kind of turn up the volume a little bit um and it's going to be a little bit painful at first but i'll just start you know popping up a, a few bands and so I'm, I'm patching the attenuator output back into the input and i've only got three bands up i've got the 250 the 630 and the uh 3.5k up and the goal is to not have like if i just have the 3.5 up you know we just hear that really nasty Sing, and there's no kind of fluctuation in that sound. You know, it's just a very static, high sound. But as I bring these up, you get more different kind of tones, right? You can kind of hear the lower of the 250. I'll bring up a 1.3. Didn't really do much. Maybe pull up an 8K a bit. Maybe a 5K as well. Okay, so when I put up that 5K, that brought some nastiness to it. Let me kind of help out in the low end more. So I'll bring up 150 a tad. Okay, that kind of changed things, but you definitely hear like a wavering in the sound. Um, so I have the, this is, what we're hearing is the all output from the programmed output section. So we can actually start, and it's full up to max. So we can actually start filtering this, right? So now I've turned it up, or turned it the... Uh, width uh, down a little, you know, it's around 11 o'clock on the dial or so. And then we can sweep the uh, frequency. So we've kind of like created our own, you know, tone, noisy kind of drone. And there's different things to explore in this. Um, but now what we can kind of do is check out the envelope followers again. So I'll start at zero. And let me actually let me turn this back up. Let's listen to this. Because when you got this really kind of static tone, you're not there's not gonna be much fluctuation like when we weren't modulating the oscillator before. It just we're gonna have this, you know, find that these outputs are stuck in one kind of uh, voltage. So this first one it's yeah stuck about halfway up. Uh, this is all the way up on this um, uh, first output, which or the one <laughs> labeled one. Now on the second one, that's all the way up. Third. So now when we get to the fourth output, uh, we are seeing this fluctuation um, kind of centering about the seventh um, um, position on the MARF and going down to five and up to ten. Uh, we can bring back up our... Um, complex oscillator to hear that timbre again. So I just switched it to combo instead of short and then hitting it to long and now it, it kind of jumped up so now it seems to be centering around 9 and 10 and fluctuating down to 8 and 11. So even flipping that switch around you can kind of hear the difference between that. Similar in these mid frequencies. Kind of getting similar things. much higher this is in the nine uh, output which is 1.6 a we got static B we got static C D okay F or E is kind of cool but that's based higher up we're kind of fluctuating from the 16 to 15 spot down and there's F and so now I'm going to try raising um, the last slider, this F section. We don't have that up at all, just to see how 
bringing that into the mix, what that would do. And yeah, it did kind of up that, it, it shifted the voltage up a few notches. And we can, you know, add other sliders and just kind of see how stuff changes. So yeah, I brought up more of the kind of left side of the uh, 296, more of the low mids. And yeah, it's getting a lot more chaotic as we can hear. I'll switch it to long. Didn't do too, or it, it calmed it down a bit. This is combo. And back to short. Let's check out like seven again, kind of the same area. All right, now I'm back to four and we're seeing a lot of fluctuation. Here's it in combo and here it is. output so yeah just you know something to, <laughs> to think about this is not I mean I'll kind of go back I'll turn down that oscillator and you can actually hear what's going on in the I'm kind of sweeping back through the um, the frequency control and so we're hearing the feedback So it's kind of cool to know that it can make its own feedback tones for you to sculpt with, which are pretty interesting. I don't know how it, if it would, you know, I would be getting the same exact thing by like finding a, a sawtooth oscillator or a square or something and getting these exact same frequencies. Um, another cool thing, I guess, when you're kind of just focusing on the feedback is you can start patching uh, like we'll take this um, B1 for instance uh, this B output we can patch it into another band um, to kind of pull this up in the mix a bit so I'll put, put this in a 3 didn't really do much 4 5 did a little bit let me go okay so now I patch it into D which is uh, the third from the last um, the 5k output and we can kind of hear that chittering around a bit more and there's E so because it's you know this is kind of going through the local inputs it's coming out the programmed output it's a bit separate we're still using the program control with the max and the um, sorry the max width I don't know, I call it, keep on calling it max. The width and the frequency, and we have the frequency kind of turned around the, maybe around the 500 um, uh, frequency range, but you know, we can turn the max all the way down, and we're just hearing that E output, the 8K right now, but kind of, you know, mix that back in. We can try some other frequency. So I'm now plugging seven into uh, output into input one and so we turn that down then we get those two sounds and this is just kind of me messing around with seven plugging into different inputs There you go. Kind of cool um, to just check this out with feedback. You can do the opposite too. You could plug the program output into the main all input and start using the and use that to um, find your way around to get into some feedback and then um, you know also use uh, then use the uh, attenuator outputs into the mixer and kind of just bring up specific bands um, with just the sliders. So yeah, pretty cool. Something to check out. <laughs> 